during worship this morning, you had that vision. Tell the people what you saw about that poverty spirit trying to sneak in this building. Go ahead, just tell them. So as I, as I was worshiping, I, I saw way over, just across the road there that the spirit of poverty, you know. All at once, I saw this huge, gigantic foot just went, no, okay. And then I saw two dump loads of cash just coming from the north, dumping it right here. Come said, on, yeah. come yeah. on, <laughs> come on. Isn't that awesome? Come on. <clears throat> you have to understand is, is God speaks to us in different ways. Just little, little, so, sometimes it's like Alexis got this Polaroid camera. I didn't even think she knew what a Polaroid camera was. And, and you know, how many remember a Polaroid camera? And you, you'd take a picture and it would shoot out a blank page, but you, you watched it develop. God would take a negative and develop it. <clears throat> and you get just a little sound or you get just a glimpse and, and I got one this morning. Jan came in, was telling me something about her devotions, and she was telling me one thing, but one little word, one little phrase popped out at me. She was telling me the chapter she was reading in is the place where it talks about where the angel rolled away the stone. And instantly, I saw this, that before the resurrection could be revealed, the angel had to roll away the stone. Now, what's interesting is Jesus had the power that he could have just blasted that stone out of his way. How many know what I'm talking about? But God sent an angel to roll away the stone so that he had freedom to come out of the tomb. And, and it was like all of this happened in a split second. The Holy Spirit said, today, direct the angels to roll away the stone from your miracle healing that's inside. The stone has been holding it captive and then when Charlotte told me that she saw that spirit of poverty lingering over here in the corner but that foot came out of heaven and squashed it I put the two and two together that that was in fact the angel of the Lord rolling away the stone so the truckloads of money could come so if you have got a financial adversity attacking you right now. The enemy's been holding back money or stealing money or hindering money. Lift your hands right now. If you, if you need that miracle healing in your body, in Jesus' name, by the Holy Ghost, angels, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Let the resurrection power be released in the name of Jesus. Those of you watching on the webcast, those of you here in the room, receive it now in Jesus' name. Can you, can you handle one more testimony? And I just hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, as you are standing for your healing, do not quit. Do not become discouraged because you get prayer and you get a touch. And then all of a sudden it's there again. But we are standing in that place for the stone to be rolled away. I came in, when was it? A few days ago, Tuesday, Wednesday morning. And I have a problem with the eyes that I'm standing against. But this particular day, it's happened about three times in this past year. Everything began to get wavy. When you were a kid, did you ever go into the carnival where they had mirrors that you looked like you were just waving or just going or whatever? It's kind of like that. 
And because I, they say after the stroke three years ago that I'm half blind in each eye and I have no peripheral, so if I pass by you and don't speak, that's why. But we are standing. But I can function, I can move, and I can tell you that as you stand in your trial, that you will get stronger Come and on. stronger, and you are a threat to the enemy. So do not give up. But just as I got out of the car, for has he not said that our steps are ordered of him as we are directed by him, as we acknowledge him? Pastor was getting out of a car. He came up and I just said, I need this prayer. And we stepped inside. He got his oil out and anointed me. And I mean to tell you the waviness as I turned to walk back to the car. The waviness stopped. It ceased. Come on. And I am here to tell you, you cannot give up. The more you stand, the more you speak the word of the living God, Come on. the stronger you're becoming within. So that no matter what comes your way, you will be more than victorious in him. And at that due season, the full manifestation will come. But you know what? I'm happy in the Lord if it never comes. I know. I am not saying the negative. I'm just saying that whatever state you find yourself in, praise him through it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Can you, can you handle just a little bit more good news? Come up here, Brad. Brad has been teaching on the book of Romans and the 9 o'clock hour. What does that scripture say, Brad? Romans, Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet. Come on. Hallelujah. Say it again. And the God of peace will swiftly pound Satan to a pulp under your feet. Come on. Come on, somebody just pound the enemy. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pound him good in Jesus' name. Come on, pound him good under your feet in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Know that you are not alone. I am with you. I am in you. I am for you. And today I am rolling away the stone. The stone of sickness, the stone of poverty, the stone of adversity, the stone of anything that has come against you. Because no, I am with you. I am for you. I am in you. You are not alone. And I am removing away the stone. Where my glory will be shown. <laughs> because I'm rolling away the stone today. Today. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus. For the Lord has said it is time for my people to roar. It is time for my people to roar. For I am the lion of the tribe of Judah through you. And the Lord would say, as you declare my word, as you declare from my heavens my word, it will come forth like a roar, and the enemy will flee, saith the Lord. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus, I declare that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. I declare God's, as it is in God's kingdom come, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And his will for us is to be victorious in our health, victorious in our finances, victorious in our relationships, victorious in our emotions, whatever is uh, coming against us, we are
are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Declare his perfect will and plan for our lives. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
you to sing and prophesy their miracle. Just sing it and prophesy their miracle. What you don't know is that nearly every single one of these women is facing a life-threatening disease or a lifelong problem in their health. Also, I don't think I've ever told you, but in 2008, Benny Hinn family gave me that sword and told me it was a healing sword. Today's, as far as I know, today's the first time I've used it since 2008. Come on, come on. Come on, stretch your hands out towards them. Let's get a miracle. Release it. Come on, come on, press through, press through, press through, press through, press through. Come on, church, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Let God touch you right now. Let Him touch you. If you should say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe those things which you said shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. You are royalty. You are made like me. What you say becomes. What you say creates. You can create like me. My breath is life in you. So breathe. Breathe it and speak to the mountain. Tell the mountain to move. Believe what you say and you will have it. Come on. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Stretch your hands out towards them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, by faith, we seal the anointing into their physical body. The seed of God's word, the seed of God's presence, the seed of God's healing saturates their body. The enemy cannot steal it. The thorns and thistles cannot choke it out. Roots go down deep into their spirit man and let it bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold return for what has happened today. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Shout miracles in Jesus' name. Woo! Come on. Come on. If you were facing cancer, you were facing surgeries, you were facing debilitating disease, if you were facing infirmity, 
How many would appreciate God showing up and just touching you like he's doing right now? Come on, give him a shout of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 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 With your hands raised towards heaven, Lord, we reach out to all of those who could not be in service today. You know each one of these by name. And we pray especially right now for Farah and Lois and Kathy. I, I just, every one of these is so critical. <clears throat> for Jack, in Jesus' name, we're asking you for miracles. Several even standing right here, going into surgery even this week. Some going through cancer treatments this week in Jesus' name. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Somebody told me the Spanish word is even stronger. It's basta. Anybody Spanish here? Is that the right? Am I saying it right? Basta means enough. Come on, say it with some intestinal fortitude basta Woo! come on we're teaching you Spanish here Jesus name. every infirmity I break its hold off of your life right now in Jesus name every witchcraft or generational spirit or any kind of hindrance any negative words or declarations from medical or legal or financial in the name of Jesus whom the sun sets free is free indeed now some of you are new to the church some of you maybe even today's your first day say what kind of weirdness have I gotten myself into Sid Roth says, welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Why would you bother going to church where there's a form of godliness, but there's no power? Why would you go to church to worship and God doesn't even show up? Why would you go to church and the Holy Spirit is not welcome to intervene and intercede and, and to interrupt? Hallelujah. Come on, thank, thank the Lord that He's here today. Woo! Come on. And let's pray today for the Franklin Graham event at 4 o'clock over in Plant City. Lord, just stretch your hands out towards Plant City. It'd be in that corner right over there. Lord, we just we speak to that whole event. Let it be protected. No harm or violence or disturbance or hindrance. We speak to the weather to be held back. And it'd be a nice, beautiful day. We pray the anointing will be there to remove burdens, destroy yokes, and change lives in Jesus' name. Let it have an impact upon this region in Jesus' name. That's at 4 o'clock today. You'll have to leave here around 2, 2.30 to get there to get a good seat, be at the Strawberry Festival. Do you have something? You just bring it back the sword? Okay. It's kind of dangerous when my wife picks up the sword. I'm watch that and then uh, how many Puerto Ricans in the house Puerto Ricans raise your hand Puerto Ricans yeah they're always the noisy ones stretch your hands towards any of these Puerto Ricans Lord we use them as a point of contact we pray for Puerto Rico right now in the name of Jesus 
We ask you to have mercy on them. Lord, have mercy on Puerto Rico. We pray for John Garcia and others that are there helping in the recovery process, in the humanitarian process. We ask you to guard and guide them, all those that are trying to help for electricity, clean water, medical help, food, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. <clears throat> now listen to me. Isaiah 45, if you want to read it, don't do it now. Isaiah 45, you'll remember that President Trump is president number 45. Isaiah 45 says, and, and, and I'm speaking prophetically here, says that President Trump has been raised up just like King Cyrus was in Isaiah 45. King Cyrus was not even a good Christian, okay? He wasn't a good Jewish guy. But God put his hand on King Cyrus to literally destroy all of the enemies of Israel and also to disrupt and dismantle evil, wicked kingdoms around the world. And President Trump is anointed to do just that. This is not a political statement. I was not even going to vote for him until the night before, and God changed my vote. Okay? All right? I, I'm like Dexter Sanders uh, Thursday night at our rally said he had to hold his nose and pull the lever for Trump. I just thought that was funny. Never thought about that. But listen, God's anointing is on him. So what you're seeing happen in Iran, what you're seeing happen even in the news media, that's one of the mountains that the scriptures talks about. How many are seeing the media mountain literally turned upside down? And you're seeing nations of the world being turned upside down so in the name of Jesus we pray for the Iranian people Lord somebody told me just this past week that Abraham came out of Iran I didn't know that somebody ought to check that up before I preach it but Lord we just pray right now for the Iranian people in the name of Jesus protect them protect those protesters and Lord turn those mullahs upside down and let them have let the Iranian people have their country back in Jesus name and we pray for the peace and the protection of Israel in Jesus name give Israel wisdom and Lord we pray over all of President Trump his team his cabinet all of his advisors the spiritual advisors, political advisors, governmental advisors, bind any tongue that is not speaking your, the mind, will, and purposes of God and release the anointing into the White House and every house that has leadership over us in any way. We bind the anti-Christ spirit, the anti-God spirit, the anti-Israel spirit, Hatred and violence, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Racism, injustice, we bind it in Jesus' name. And we declare and decree pro-life, pro-traditional family values, pro-scripture, pro-constitution. We declare it into the atmosphere over this region, across our state, and around this nation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give this worship team a big God bless you. Thank you, team. You may be seated. Welcome those that have joined us. Whew. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just breathe in God's presence. Breathe in God's presence. You may not understand what's going on. God says, trust me. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. Come on, breathe in his presence. The very atmosphere right now is charged with all the vitamins, all the medicines, all the healing virtue, all the delivering power. Even those of you watching on the broadcast, grab a hold of your digital device. Breathe in the power of God in the name of Jesus. If you've got a place on your body that needs to be healed, put your hand on it. If you, if you just need healing all over, put your hand on your head. In the name of Jesus, breathe in the power of God. Break every chain. Break every chain. Destroy every yoke. And you might as well get used to it, says the Lord. For I am interrupting the services, the church that has been cold for so long in a season. But this is the season that I am moving and I am roaring and I am putting a roar within you. And I am establishing once again the joy of the Lord rising up within you. And even the praise and the worship, because it is the worship that is going to put the enemy into confusion in this hour. And yes, the church has cried out for the supernatural. Even the youth of this hour are searching for the supernatural in the wrong places. And even some of you as intercessors have said, why God? Why are we not seeing the very things that are spoken about in the Bible? The, oh, the day of Acts when things were done and it was, it was a normal thing. Get ready for even this day the angels have rolled away some stones and you will move into that place as a church, as a body that I'm calling you into. So don't think it's strange when you see things going on in the service and watch the doors open because people are coming and will come to see just what is going on in the churches in this hour. For there is a hunger being stirred 
a hunger for the things of God, a hunger for answers, even when the church as a whole has felt there were no answers to be had. Get ready, for this is going to be a common factor in the church and within the body in this hour. Hallelujah. Come on. If you have any form of discouragement or depression or frustrations or anxieties, any form of it, whether it's just a little bit or a lot, just lift your hands right now. In Jesus' name, I break it off of you right now in the name of Jesus, and I declare the joy of the Lord fill you now. Joy. Hallelujah. I said joy. I'm serious about the joy. Let it bubble out of your belly. I'm serious. Be filled with the joy. Some of you need a good stiff drink of the wine from heaven. Just We're just taking a little break right now. Come on, breathe it in. Take your medicine. Okay, I cannot be quiet. You taught us well. The Hebrew children said, our God can deliver us, and our God will deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow. Amen. Amen. Filled with the joy. Filled with the joy. Filled with the joy. And those children in the fiery furnace before they got in had to overthrow their soul. Soul, get down. Spirit, rise up. Overthrow your soul. Overthrow that depression and everything. Believe the word of God. Overthrow what is in your mind. It will always think of good and evil. Adam and Eve set that up. Don't succumb to your soul. Don't succumb to what you're thinking. Overcome. Overcome. Throw it down. Press that soul on the floor and say, I believe what my spirit says. And that is what the almighty God says in his word. Yes! Hey! The joy bubbles up, praises from the inside, come up and out. Give God a shout because he already got it. And then 20. Woo! Somebody shout! Woo! Brother Strader, Brother Strader, when are we getting to the main part of the service? This is the main part of the service. (laughs) 
I'm telling you, I, I'm feeling it all over more than anywhere else. If you're 59 and above, if you wouldn't mind standing up right now, <clears throat> because I'm going to prophesy over you. I'm going to prophesy that, remember, Abraham did not consider his own body. Some of y'all are looking at this body and you're thinking, Lord, have mercy. If I could just make it till tomorrow, I'll be doing good. But you understand, God has implanted and infused you with power. It's supernatural, spiritual power. And it's going to overcome every limitation that you think that you have in your body, in your strength, in your mind. And no, you're not done. You're going on. You're going on with Jesus. Because this is his will for the people in this place. And this is the will for his people all over the planet. This generation right here, 59 and above, I don't know why I got that, probably because I'm 59, and I'm getting ready to go into that new decade. And we're going into a new decade, y'all, and God has need of us. He has need of us. So rise up if you've let the calling and the stuff that God has kind of said in the past this is what you're going to do. You need to pick that back up. You need to pick that back up. You need to dust it off. You need to get with God, and you need to say, God, I want to go on with you now. I'm done with the season of looking at my body and saying, oh, help me, Jesus. He's already helped you. But you got to let your mind and your mouth agree with what he's already done. And I want to declare one more thing in this place. The knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. I declare this is a season of knowing your God. Knowledge. Some of you have said, I don't know God. This is a season. Come and know him. Come and know him. Get close to him. He's ready to empower you and pick up those mantles again. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the knowledge of God. I thank you for the knowledge of God. I thank you that we will know our God and we will do exploits, God. And I thank you for this generation of 59 and older that are going to stand in their place as intercessors, as healers, as deliverers, as those that are going to, to distribute prosperity. All the things, God, that you are, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Wives, obey your husbands. <laughs> Just cover everybody in prayer. I'm all lean. <laughs> it's fun when God shows up. <laughs> Lord, open our eyes that we will see and our ears that we will hear. Lord, help us to know the fragrance of our shepherd when he's walking with us. That even when we feel like we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because you are constantly telling us to fear no evil, to be of good courage. Lord, help us in the days and the hours, and I mean literally just in the next few minutes, 
the next few hours, the next few days. Help us to see everything that you're doing on our behalf. Open our eyes into the spirit realm of the places that you're walking and how you're standing near us, that you're going before us, you're behind us, you've encamped us with many angels. Lord, teach us your ways, like that was just said, that revelation is unfolding, that every time we open the word, that we hear a new facet of who you are, that we that we know because of what you've revealed to us, that the things that have been in secret, the treasures that you've had hidden away, that as we walk and lift the box to the treasure, that we will it will be revealed to us who we are in Christ, what authority we have, the joy that we have, that we're already can operate in, the peace that overwhelms us, Lord, when we're walking through situations. Lord, let there be an unusual encompassing of your glory. Lord, we thank you that you're causing us to aspire to greatness. The places that you take us will cause others to know you, will cause others to see the glory of God revealed. Don't let us settle for a little bit. Lord, I pray that you teach us how to walk in to deeper waters. Help us to walk to the point that we have to float, that we have to rest, <laughs> that we're soaking in, that we're encompassed around about by your glory. Lord, I thank you that your promises are true, that you are bringing our children, our grandchildren, our spouses to the kingdom of God. That what the enemy has been trying to do to them, the places he's taken them, that God is only equipping them to be fiery warriors for you. Lord, help them to see how good and how great and mighty you are and how small the enemy is. Lord, I thank you that the sword of the Lord is in their hand, that your word is in their mouth, that you are teaching them. That, Lord, you are taking them beyond their years. That you are re letting revelation come to those that are in our household. They're a part of our household and they've not even known you. But, Lord, I thank you that they're coming into the knowing of who you are. Lord, I thank you that the joy that is set before them will be, so overtake them. That they said, wow, why didn't I do this before? But look where I'm at today. God, I thank you that you're opening new ways, new places. That you are leading them in paths of righteousness. Lord, I thank you that your healing is flooding our hospitals, our homes, our neighborhoods. Father, everywhere we go, let your glory bring healing bring restoration, that there's no more brokenness, that God, even your presence that you have poured into us will bring healing and restoration to others, that the brokenness will stop in Jesus' name. God, you sent men and women from our church all over the nation. They're in, our, in the wars. They're in camps all around the world protecting us. Lord, let them be glory carriers. Let them hear the sound of the Spirit today as they're on foreign fields, even here in, our, in the U.S., that, God, you would help them to hear your voice today. Fill them up, Lord, to overflowing.
pray in the Holy Ghost. Just lift your heart before the Lord. He'll touch you right now, right there where you're seated. Break every yoke. I remove every burden. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of of Jesus. If you need to repent, do it. If you need to cry out to God, do it. Do it right now. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Purify me. You've been looking at things you shouldn't look at. You've been going places you shouldn't go. If you've been thinking thoughts you should not think, Ask God to forgive you right now and cleanse you. Ask him to come into your heart and into your life right now. I release his forgiveness power into you right now. Be clothed with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, I bind every deceiving spirit, every wicked spirit that has tried to cloud your thinking, tormenting spirits, I break your hold in Jesus' name. Loose God's people. Let them go right now. The blood of Jesus. Witchcraft of any kind, water spirits, demonic strongholds, I break your hold. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, dementia, Alzheimer's, torments of the mind, I break your hold in Jesus' name. Minds become strong, alert. In Jesus' name. Cleanse the blood. Right now, I cleanse your blood. Every kind of disease, any kind of dormant cancer, or dormant disease, dormant weakness. I cleanse the blood in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's a day of breakthrough. Today, everything changes. Come on, let your spirit man rise up. That's the cry of the Holy Spirit. Let your voice be heard. That's the cry of the Holy Spirit right there. Let your voice be heard. Oh, 
Kirschon, da 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 ba koran, da 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 bo sonde. Kirschon, da 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 bo koran, da 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 bo rite. Shi kaporan, da da bo tonde. Land, da 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 ba karata, da bo shonda. Kirschon, da 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 bo sonde. Let your voice be heard. Come on, confess it with your mouth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. I will not be silenced. My voice will not be weakened. I will cry out. I will defend my family. I will defend my church. I will defend my ministry. I will defend my country. My voice will not be silenced. Come on, some of you haven't prayed in the Spirit for a long time. Release it right now by faith. Lift your hands and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you've never received before, lift your hands. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit now. Come on, young people, lift your voice. Those of you watching, lift your voice. Be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me to remove burdens, to destroy yokes, to change lives, to open the sight of the blind, to make the lame to walk, to proclaim this is the year of Jubilee. This is the year of the favor of our God. This is the year where God comes on his people and releases his anointing in mind-blowing ways. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It's never even crossed your mind what the Lord is going to do through you. Through you on the job, in your home, in your neighborhood, even out at play, in the classroom, in Jesus' name. In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Yes, God always has and will continue to anoint certain men, certain women to do certain things. But in the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. That's old and young, black and white, Hispanic, Asian, tattooed, pierced, handsome, ugly. And all flesh. All flesh. Even Puerto Rican flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God just zaps you and you get that instant miracle. There are other times when you have to work for it, and, and I mean that in a positive way. Remember Jesus put mud 
on a blind man's eye and he told him, now go and walk. Sometimes you have to take steps of faith, even discipline. We don't like that word discipline. But the disciples came to Jesus and say, why couldn't we cast out that demon? And Jesus said, that particular demon only comes out through prayer and fasting. You have to do your part. Sometimes your part is just to get out of the boat. The water did not become hard under Peter's feet until he got out of the boat. Sometimes you have to do something, make a decision. I was watching uh, Charles Stanley today, and he had a testimony of a man who he and his wife were watching one of Charles Stanley's messages, and it touched his heart. And the man had been a lifelong alcoholic. But that day, sitting in his living room, watching the man of God preach, and he made a decision, I will never touch alcohol again. And it's been four years, and he's been free of it. Sometimes it takes a decision. Now, anybody ever been involved in the addiction of alcohol knows that a decision on your own doesn't work. It takes God to do it. But it begins with... Oftentimes, it begins with a decision. There are rare examples in history and in the Bible where God just supernaturally zaps somebody. The vast majority of the time, it's because you make a decision. I will go to the healing meeting, and I will get prayer. I will get healed. Or it takes discipline. Like, I, I've been praying for I don't know how many years for diabetes to, to get out of my body. And I've read books, I've taken pills, I've done all kinds of things. I made a decision, I'm going to conquer diabetes. For the last couple of years now, my sugar count has been in the 160s and 170s, and it's supposed to be below 120. And I've taken pills, and the doctor added another pill, and it would not budge. December 31st, I made a decision. I'm going to eat right. <laughs> so now I've lost 18 pounds, and this morning my sugar was 111. <laughs> yeah. First time in years it's been below 115. In years. But I, God put his super on my natural. I made the decision. I started eating right. Doing what I'm supposed to do. And then God did the rest. Amen? That's what it takes. Make a decision right now in the atmosphere of the anointing. Not a New Year's resolution. This has got to be a... a Gut level, heart level decision. Some of you have been looking at stuff you shouldn't be looking at. Some of you have been letting things in your brain. People have been trying to tell you, stop thinking like that. Philippians 4.8 is the thought filter. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are honest, whatever things, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, think on these things. The Bible literally says, fix your mind on positive things. And if you've been, your mind's been wandering, going to places it shouldn't go, make a decision today. Whatever you got to do, if you got to put a rubber band around your wrist and just pop yourself every time you start thinking goofy stuff, do it. Start. I went through a season in my life where I couldn't get 
I mean, I was being overwhelmed with torment in my mind about some things that our church had gone through. This was years ago. And I tried everything. Nothing was working. And finally, I just made a decision. And one day, every time I started rehearsing, you know what I mean by rehearsing. You've done it. You've rehearsed how that divorce went, or you reversed you rehearsed how that conversation went, or you re- rehearsed how that situation took place. And I was rehearsing. And man, I was getting all worked up. I was driving down the road, and I was getting worked up. I mean, sweat was coming down the back of my neck. I was getting more angry. Rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. And suddenly, I had to say, no! And I literally started I changed my thoughts, and I started thinking about the wonderful time we had had at Winter Park with our family and went snow skiing. I literally just, and I remember riding the gondola up through the, through the forest and just snow falling on my face. I literally just changed my thoughts. But then my brain kicked back in and started trying to take me back, and I said, No! And I remembered strapping on my boots and strapping on the, on the skis and going down. I literally had to do that. That was the way that time that God used that experience to force my brain in the right direction. And it, it went on for months. But instead of rehearsing the negative, I rehearsed the positive. Now you say, well... That just sounds like, you know, positive thinking and mental self-help. Listen, where do you think all of that came from? The mistake is, is when you trust on that, you have to trust in God. You trust the Holy Spirit. And he puts his super on something that is a natural, effective tool. How many know the, the Bible says laughter does good like a medicine? Well, you got these goofy Buddhists that go around creating laughter because they did get benefit from laughing. How many have ever seen that? Am I the only one that's seen that? How many have seen it where they all get together and laugh? They call it the laughing group or laughing something. And it does have benefit because laughter doeth good like a medicine. Right? Right? But that's not our dependence. Our dependence is on the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is a decisive thing where you decide, I will trust in my God and I will rejoice. Rejoice. I will rejoice in the Lord always. And then his supernatural kicks in and carries that joy right into the most unusual situations. I've been in funerals and just started laughing and I had to contain myself. Or how how about that time? How many remember Annette Anders, our keyboard player? And she got upset in church one day because she was up there playing on the keyboard And everybody was being touched by God, but she was sitting up there and she had to play the keyboard and she wasn't being touched. It really irritated her. And so she got in her car and drove across to Walmart over here to to get some groceries. Or uh, not Walmart, Publix. She went across over to Publix and she got to aisle number two. How many remember what's on aisle number two? There's a, there was a box of Quaker oat cereal all lined up on the shelf. How many have ever seen it? The little parson hat and the Quaker oat. How many have ever seen Quaker oats cereal? Well, did you know why they called them Quakers? Because in church, on Sunday morning, in church, just like this, they'd all, when the power of God would come in, they'd all start quaking. Just tell your neighbor, that's kind of weird. But they would literally shake under the power of God, and they became known as Quakers. And that was in the 1800s. That was before Azusa Street in 1904. 
And she got to thinking about that little parson in the black hat in the Quaker oat cereal and how they would quake under the power of God. And she'd begin to quake on aisle number two in Publix. <laughs> and she quaked so much that she fell over into her grocery cart with her derriere sticking right up in the air. Just she was over in that cart. And the manager of Publix came over and says, Lady, are you okay? Is everything okay? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So I pray today. If you don't get it here, you'll get it in Publix. Or over here in Walmart. Or even while you're driving down Highway 98. I'm serious. I hope you get pulled over for drunk driving. And the police officer come over to your window and say, Lady, have you been drinking? Yes, I was drinking at Ignited Church. That's where I was drinking. And you're going to have to explain yourself. How many remember that happened too to that lady? That was funny. You'll get it while you're working in the bakery. We've had principals of, of schools, public schools, call us and saying, what are you doing down there? We can't even have math class. Everybody in the class is laughing. <laughs> That's true. Right up here in, in what, what's the elementary school? Was it Winston Elementary right back here? They, uh, a pageant. It was at pa Pageant Elementary. They actually had to assign an empty room as a drunk tank for the boys and girls that would get hit by the Holy Spirit in the public school. It was a whole season. It lasted about nine months here where the joy of the Lord just broke out and it was uncontrollable. How many went through that? We were known as the laughers. You had the Quakers, the Shakers, and the laughers. Get them, Jesus. <laughs> well, it's a good time to take the offering. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And how many know somebody drunk is very generous, drinks are on me, right? So Lord, thank you for all these generous people here today. And we thank you for those that are generous watching on the broadcast today. And we just thank you that today's a miracle offering, not just a miracle for this house, but it'll be a miracle offering that will release the finances into every home that is sowing into the vision of this house. And I pray right now, we thank you for that vision Charlotte had at the beginning of the service where you squashed that stinking demon of poverty and you released the truckloads, literally truckloads were backing up to the church and literally dumping cash into this house. I release that word into this house and every house in the name of Jesus. Truckloads. Glory to God. Not to consume it upon our own lust, but in order to be a blessing to our family and every family and the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Ushers come. How many would like for how many would like to stay to at least one o'clock so I could preach the sermon that I stayed up late preparing? Dot said she'll stay. Go ahead and receive the offering, gentlemen. And listen, if there's any drunks that are kind of out of it, just roll them and get whatever you can get. Okay. Um, 
I, I want to, I, my goal was to get you out early today so that uh, I want you to get something to eat and head over to Plant City. It'll be on the Strawberry Festival grounds. I want you to be there. We want to support Franklin Graham and uh, pray that lives will be touched by this. You have to understand that how many have ever gone fishing in your whole life? You've ever gone fishing. Will you understand that you use a different kind of bait, different kind of gear when you're saltwater fishing, when you're freshwater fishing, when you're going for bluegill or you're going for tarpon? You've got to use different kind of gear to do it. And in Franklin Graham's case, it's a different type of fishing, okay? And, and you, you, it may not be your cup of tea or it may be something that, that's just not of interest to you. But when you support it, and even if you can't go, make a commitment that at 4 o'clock today you'll be praying for, him, for them. Just take an hour and pray. And let's see a mighty net, a net breaking boatload of men and women, young people, drawn into the kingdom of God. I think they're going to do a, a youth uh, band or something too, and young people will be encouraged to come. So let's support it and be praying. And, and while you're there, Pray and ask God. God may have you to just reach out to someone and say, hey, would you like for me to pray with you? Or when he calls the people forward, say, hey, would you like for me to go with you? Walk with them. Sometimes all it takes is that moment of encouragement. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's stand together. <clears throat> if you want to read my sermon. It was Romans 12, 1 and 2. So <laughs> Romans 12, 1 and 2 is my sermon today. Make sure you read it in the Passion Translation. Um, it, it's just power. A and then powerful. And then how many have ever heard of the Message Translation? That was the conclusion to my whole sermon today was the Message Translation, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I had never read the Message Bible for those two verses. So read those. Lift your hands like lightning rods up to heaven. Heavenly Father, we just seal this today by the power of God. Again, we plead the blood of Jesus over every mind, will, emotion, over every parent, child, grandparent, friend, neighbor, everyone that is gathered here and watching on the broadcast. In the name of Jesus, we release the power of God once, once more. Once more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let today be a day of freedom and liberty. And come on, thank the Lord for being here with us today. What a privilege to be in the house of God today. How many are glad you came on a day when God showed up? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell you, I do not want to dismiss, but I'm going to dismiss. And I'm going to be standing up here. Any of you that are new to the church today or have just been coming the last few weeks, I would love the opportunity to meet you. Go get your children. Bring them back in. We'll pray for your whole family. Or if you need extra prayer today, you were a little timid and you just didn't step out, come on up and see me. Those of you on the webcast, make sure that you write to me right now. Write to me. Tell me where you're watching from and what God did for you today. Ignitedchurch at gmail.com. Ignitedchurch at gmail.com. That's the address that I use just for you. So write to me now. God bless you. Love some.